everyone, it's Toya from John's Furniture Repair and I'm in here with one of our last projects in the shop. We have a few more, just this is one of the last ones and it's an old trunk that's actually one of my very good friends here. It's her mother's. So uh, she's one of the, the first people who I was really good friends with in the horse world and she's helped my horse a lot as she went through her blindness and uh, her name is Marcy and she has a Magna Wave business here in Windsor, Essex, and she's quite a gem. So this is her mom's, and her mom is also wonderful, and we're gonna be restoring it and giving it to her before we leave. I've had it sitting, you've probably seen it, sitting under this table that I work at sometimes in videos, and uh, it's finally made its way on top of the bench. So let me show you some details on this guy. After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop. And after 25 years, I can truly say, I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300 year old hand carved piece of history or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna and this is John's Furniture Repair. All right, so when I picked this up, um, it was actually in a barn where there was horses and other animals, and it was a family that had been in her, or a trunk that had been in her family for a while, and she gave it to me. And it does have quite a bit of rust and damage. There are some handles missing, and uh, stay tuned for how we deal with that. And it's just kind of a beautiful old trunk. It does have issues, but it still is gonna be a beautiful piece of antique furniture. So inside, there's no stays, so I've gotta hold it up here. And there are some cracks in the lid and some area where, is there, where there's been some repairs to the hinge. There's only got one hinge on it right now. Um, it looks like that's a new board back there um, and the bottom is quite cracked up as well. This is some beautiful old paper, but I do have new actual trunk papers that we're gonna be putting in here. So I'll show you those, but yeah, it just needs a lot of attention. And it's like a, um, this is like a, a burlap that's glued onto the case with metal banding and hinges and hardware with wood slats and some leather slats as well, which are some, some of them are missing. So we won't be doing a total um, repair of everything that's missing. Some things will just be missing. We're gonna leave it in a very rustic state. I'm going to clean it, seal it, get rid of some rust, in places and repaper the interior. So this right here is some paper and you can actually get this at Lee Valley. They sell a couple of different styles. It's like a, I think it's called a brown acanth. A, a can't, I'm not, I can't say the word. Anyways, that's a really beautiful color. I think this one is blue. No, this one's brown too. Okay, oh, okay, so we're gonna be doing a brown acanth. I'll just say it on here. Acanthus right there. That's the style of the pattern. And it comes in blue, brown, and I think another color in Lee Valley, and they do have other uh, styles too. So that'll be a little while later. First, let's uh, vacuum a few years of dust off of this thing, clean it up, and get started on, I don't know where to start actually. Anyways, we'll just go where the wind blows me.
Okay, so I think the first order of business is give this thing a bath. Um, it's super dirty. I really kind of feel like I want to replace the hinges, but I think these are original, so I don't want to do it, but they're not in good shape. I might have to take out the rivets. Definitely have to take out this interior board here. And I might just use it again, because it is a good idea. So I'm just going to use a brush, and I've filled up a pail of uh, card cutter and water here. And I am going to also spray some card cutter on the surface just to get it going with some water. And we are going to have to remove all that um, interior paper as well. So I'll just do that and then scrub it all down. It'll probably look a hundred times better just from this. Because it is super dirty. I think I'm actually going to turn this upside down so that the water runs off of this instead of into here. Be a little bit better of an idea. I don't need to get this thing totally soaking. Oh, I forgot to get all the horse hay off the back, off the bottom. Here's a gross water. You can't even see it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> okay, so I had this all drying last night, complete wash down. Still looks pretty dirty, but it looks, it smells better anyways. If I had smell of vision I could tell you that. Anyways, so I've been shining the metal here to see if that's what I really want to do. I like it. It looks a little bit more cleaned up, but there's still like splotches of black paint and rust a little bit, which we will seal in. And then uh, I think for the if these parts here, I'm just going to leave them with whatever damage they have because I think it looks kind of cool. Stuff like this, abrasions. I want to leave that. I'm going to buff all the rust that's kind of gross, but I'm not going to take off too much of everything. I like how it looks, especially, you know, around the edges of hardware. You've got like these black, dirty marks, which looks really cool. But stuff I don't like is when it's, you know, it's, it's all rusty and you can't really see any definition in the hardware. And so I got a lot of buffing to do and I'm going to be using a little 3M wheel here. And that's just a little sanding grit plastic wheel that they make in different grits. This one's a 180, so it doesn't really scratch anything. It's nice and fine. And uh, I'm gonna clean up these slats on everything as well. Probably just scrub it with some alcohol. Try to get a little bit cleaner. I'll try to get some of these stains out as well. And just generally improve it without losing the character. So, cause it looks pretty cool.
Okay, so I have been grinding away on all these beautiful steel um, hardware pieces as well as all the banding and stuff and done some repairs that I'll show you and uh, kind of repurposed some metal and done some cleaning. So I'm using um, alcohol to kind of clean up the shellac paper burlap areas. And it kind of gives life back to the original color. It does have some staining that won't come out and we might do some touch-ups on the very noticeable ones, but other than that, it looks pretty good. Yeah, so it just softens up nicely and kind of re-amalgamates the shellac. And I just wipe off. And that's what I've been doing all the way around. So you can kind of see it there. But I like the metal because it's got a lot of pitting and stuff from the rust. And I don't want to really wreck that. I just want to get all the stuff that's crumbling off and then seal it back up. Okay, so that's looking nice and clean. Got all the hardware cleaned up. Shellac is still a little bit tacky, so that's why it's a little bit shiny. And I wanted to show you my um, fix for the bottom. There was a couple of big holes in the metal here, and this whole ins entire side was kind of missing. So I stole some metal from the back. It's pretty questionable metal, and I made a patch right there. And I did a patch to cover around that edge there, and then here as well. So there's just no break in the metal. And what I did on the back, show you. So on the back, I kind of made a custom fit piece of wood and I will stain it to match that so that it doesn't um, look weird. So I do have to um, fill these holes. There's some strapping that we're not putting back on. And I did uh, fix also the holes on, um, where was it now? Pulled out something. I don't remember. Okay, and these um, wooden slats, I've kind of cleaned off a bunch of stuff on them, so I'm gonna restain them as well, so they're a little bit darker, but I like the worn look, that looks good. Just not this much, so I'll wash it down a bit more, and I will do some touch-ups on the black paint. Um, these metal strips are supposed to be black. These are the old straps that they no longer have here. You can see the slots that would go in right there. I guess I could steal my husband's old belts or something and stick them in there. Maybe I will. Anyways, um, yeah, so the lid is looking good. I've got some repairs on, oh, that's what I did. I repaired the uh, hinge mounts on the back of the lid there and did clean up the top as well. So to do a little bit more uh, work with the brush, but it's looking good. I'm really excited about this getting under shellac because everything's gonna get really nice. <clears throat> All right, it's the next day and work continues on this guy. So I wanna get these um, handles, the rest of the handles out of the pockets on the side. You can see it here. There's just pieces of them left in here. So to get access to the nails holding those on, I need to remove this. So this should just be held on with nails. A lot of these trunks have nails and then they twist them over the other side. That's what mostly they're made of. So it's really hard to get things out. It's probably nailed from the other side. Yes, it is. That's okay. Just pull it off of those nails. And because this thing doesn't have a tray and we're not making one, I'm not going to put these back on. So just leave that alone. You can see the nails sticking out there. So I'll just pop those through. And then you can, you can't really see, but if you could see around here, a little curled nails that come through the side here, what I'm gonna do is wet this side. I'm gonna wet all of it pretty, well, I'll just do it now. From the hard, we have to get all this paper off. I was thinking about leaving it on and then just putting mine over top 
which works the way I do it. I'll show you how I do it later. But I think it's got some mold and stuff behind it, so I think we'll just take it off. It's really pretty paper, though. So I'm just going to let that sit, and then we will peel this off. Okay, so I've got all the paper almost off of everything. Little bits of it left. I'm gonna let it dry um, out in the sun and then I can vacuum up all the little bits and scrape off anything that's left. So now you can see these little um, curled over nails here. That's for the handle portion. You can just see it's kind of curved over the wood. So let me get two hands on this. What, and they should be, and I mean, that's the handles. So, I just have to cut off this portion so I can pull off. Oh, there he goes. Break. So I can get off the other side. Looks like there's three of them. One, two, three. So I'll get all those out, and then we'll be able to get that rest of the leather out and prepare for the new handles. Okay, so now that we've got those all cut off inside, got it turned over here. I'm just going to pull these nails out. I think I can actually get these guys. So if you see under here, there's two more nails holding down this leather strap. And this strap looks like it was like one, two, three thinner straps. They might've been, yeah, they were sewn together to get this width. So I'm gonna be ordering new hardware for this and you can order trunk hardware and a lot of other really antique hardware like this from kennedy hardware in the states check it out so that's the same thing i'll be doing when i put these back on hopefully they come in the mail pretty quick because we really do have to get some stuff out of here we're moving so i'll get the rest of those guys out and then it will be going into the sun to dry all right so i've got all of the paper off on the inside it's a lot of ink stains. It seems like the water went through the paper and kind of dyed stuff everywhere. And I've got those handle covers off and the old handles out on both sides. So before I take, um, one problem I have to deal with before everything is, I like this repair, this piece of wood that's along here. It's nice to have that for the hinges. The only problem is, I have to decide if I want to take this hinge out because it is loose and it's bent and it doesn't work very well. So I think um, I will. Hopefully it's, I think it's glued is the only problem. It's going to be a little bit tough to get that off. Um, the other thing I want to do before I put this outside in the sun is measure for panels. The way I like to paper trunks is make very heavy uh, class or cardboard panels that fit in here and wallpaper those because then the wood as it moves doesn't split the paper in the future. So I have a whole pile of stock of papers that I use, a heavy cardboard um, that I use to paper. So I'll be using wallpaper paste on that to do this. And uh, hopefully that, that'll look good. So I'll need to get that piece off of here first. Okay, so I've got the uh, bottom of the trunk measured out here. So I'm just gonna cut it with a utility knife, a nice sharp one, and use this as a straight edge. Okay, so I'm ready to, um, I've marked all these and numbered them. I'm ready to start gluing on some paper. And I've got a few uh, leftover pieces from my last job of the brown acanthus. This really pretty paper. 
So I'm gonna be using a, it's called Border Repair Adhesive. It's wallpaper paste. And I'm just gonna use a foam roller and pour it in here. There, um, the actual wallpaper gel paste um, is what I wanted, but this is what I have. So I'm just gonna use it up. So I'm just gonna roll it on. Oops, yes. So I've got the number on the back. I'm just gonna really saturate this cardboard. And then I'm gonna try to take some of my pieces that are left over and I'm gonna leave a little bit of a lip. And I'll just smooth it out and that'll be good. Okay, so I've been doing lots of work on this. We've got um, everything painted, stained, buffed, and I did add some little feet. I actually just drilled through these and added some feet, and I added some color. The bottoms will rub off, but we'll be sealing everything. Um, did paint the rusted part here after giving a little scrub, just some black, and we're gonna clear, clear coat everything. So I did order some hardware off of Kennedy Hardware and it'll be here this week, hopefully. But that piece is ready for clear coats once it's dry. And now onto the lid. I've just been sanding these slats. We'll do the same thing here. There's a couple of tears and all I'm doing is adding some glue. I want them to stay like that, they look cool. So the glue will just kind of hold the fibers down so they don't fray. And they can just stay there as a feature. We will paint this all up as well and leave, you know, I'm not gonna sand all of this off. I'm gonna leave it nice and rustic looking because we like that. And then just dab on some black paint on this stuff and leave this one to dry too. So um, after clear coats, I'm just gonna lacquer both of these a couple times and then smooth them out with some beeswax. Give it a little bit of a buff and then we will get on to papering. So I did start yesterday or this weekend. And that's just one of the side pieces for inside the lid. So I do kind of pull it over the lip. So when you see it sitting in there, you'll see that lip and it'll look nice and clean. So I've got all these pieces numbered. I know exactly where they go. I started off using um, a weird kind of wallpaper paste, but I've used the gel before and it works a lot better. The other stuff wasn't working for me. So I picked up some gelled wallpaper paste and that'll work really good. The other thing I did was seal all of the pieces with a coat of glue so that the cardboard doesn't soak up all of my adhesive when I go to put the paper on. So those are all ready to go but I'm not going to put them in the trunk till we have the spraying and the coloring done so we don't mess them up. 
and um, then we can get it all put back together nice and hopefully the hardware is here by then. Well, guess what just arrived? My hardware. So that's awesome. Good timing. Oh, I hate glue guns. They're the worst. So, especially the upper edge, just gonna get a nice line of glue and the lower edge to hold down everything it is a bit popped up and then around the stay the side up I'm just gonna push it down so that edge is nicely flush with the wood of the trunk oh, it's looking really nice though nice and clean you can use other glue to do this because hot mouth glue is a pain in the ass um, but it works well on this application because the surface is really rough and not even, so like using a carpenter's glue is not really a great idea. I could use more wallpaper paste, but it does dry out a lot and it um, expands the paper because it's water-based. So you could use epoxy, but that's an expensive way to go. Um, something that would probably work really good is like construction adhesive, but then it's gonna really be hard to rip off of this and probably take some wood with it. Not that the hot melt won't, but usually it comes off pretty easy and you can heat it out pretty easy too. So I'll keep going around, let my gun catch up to me here. And uh, now that our hardware is here, I can start installing that and then finish up the paper. Okay, you saw me using these nails. These are big trunk nails that I ordered. They're big back steel nails. And they're meant to be bent over and stuck back into the wood. So got the one half of the hinges in. Got this hardware. Just came as we were filming, so that's kind of perfect. So let's see what I got here. And this is from Kennedy Hardware. I did order some of these brass nails just to see if I wanted to use those, but I think they'd be a little too shiny on the trunk, so I'll keep those with those for later. I ordered some natural handles that we're going to stain and wax. And I ordered a couple different types of stays. Um, these are the really flat ones. Okay, uh, sorry, someone just came to the door again. Um, so these hinges kind of like, well, or, or stays, sorry. They have a little nick here, so it opens up like that and then it hits that bump, and if it goes farther, it hits that little stay, and then it's locked in so it doesn't go anywhere and slide back. So those are kind of cool, and they're very much traditional hinge type of stays. And so are these. <clears throat> um, these are kind of like the swivel, but I'm feeling like these are a little bit too lightweight. I mean, it's not a huge, heavy trunk, so they might be okay. Um, and these have a little bit of a bump out, so you, it, you don't need a washer there, instead it just has it on the piece, so it just kind of rides and then stops. It doesn't open a whole lot, but it does click one more, and then it's stopped. So you just have to push a little bit harder. Kind of the same thing, now it's held, it can't go back, unless you really, you know, give it a little bit more pressure. So I'm gonna see which one looks best. Um, it is not a very heavyweight one. These might be the ones to use, because these are a bit long. They would be better on a bigger trunk. Anyways, we'll decide that later. The other thing um, is this trunk had straps. So I've ordered new straps. Oops. 
some trunks had like leather straps that went around and they basically go around the whole thing. And then on one side you have the little buckle piece. So sometimes you just have the little buckle piece and sometimes you can wrap this whole thing around. Basically you could use a belt, it's pretty much the same thing, but it's a little bit more flexible leather. So I'm gonna see if we can replace the ones that are on there because they're broken and half of them are missing. Okay, so you can see the old strap there that's broken. Uh, this one is there and then it's broken underneath that slat. So I would have to get those out. Um, these guys here, uh, so basically this strap would go up over and through the slats that are behind here and get tucked in and stapled down here. And then this one comes through here, here, goes around. This one doesn't have a through because there's metal here, so they can't put it on, sorry. Metal here, and then it goes through and then connects with another buckle that should be right here. So you can strap it down the front like you would with your latches. But the whole other thing is that I'm not sure adding these straps back onto this piece is really going to give it any more character or if it's going to remove character. These old straps that are left here and broken, they tell a story and they give character. Whereas these shiny new leather straps, you know, with big brass buckles and looking brand new over this trunk, they really don't tell a story. So I might not even put these on at all and they don't really need them. They're not going on long journeys with this trunk. So I'm not really sure if doing any of that is really necessary. So I'm probably not gonna do it. So forget that, but it's kind of cool to see how it would go if I were to do it. And the little slots that are in here, are, you know, that's kind of cool to see those there. And I've seen trunks with just the straps over everything, not integrated into the wood of the frame. So it's a nice trunk. Um, but I think we don't need to put those back on. Okay, so now that we got that figured out, uh, I'm gonna get to dyeing these leather handles and I'm gonna wax them with um, a beeswax leather treatment here. So I'm just gonna use, I need a glove, uh, some uh, dye stain from Mohawk. And these are like alcohol-based dye stains, penetrating NGR stains. We are just going to do a nice even application. This is raw umber. Nice color. It's a really nice brown. And we'll soak it into the side. And the other ones that, like they do sell ones that are treated, but they're black and I didn't want black. I wanted some brown leather. And the raw side, we'll just soak up lots. So I'll just give it a few feeds until I can't see any more white. Same with the sides, they're gonna need a little few applications. And these are double leather pieces sewn together. And that's about the color I want. I don't want it perfectly dark. I wanna see some leather green through there. Okay, now that it's dry, I'm gonna get this hard wax oil on the whole thing. Get it in everywhere, good stuff. And I'm gonna take actually my buffing wheel and you'll notice I use the buffing wheel and I'm gonna get wax in my buffing wheel to get the wax spread around. And then for the edge, I'm gonna burnish it with the inside of this piece, this hard piece. And I'm not a leather worker, but this is a quick way that I do this. So I'll just show you the results. And I got all the stuff in, and now I'm just going to turn it up and get to a shine. All right, so you can see the difference with that nice burnished edge versus 
the raw edge that's got a lot of pieces and fuzz hanging out of it so that's it's just a quick burnishing i know that they sell little burnishing tools that i could get but this is going to be perfect for this application so i'll just do the rest of them like that okay so i've got my two handles burnished and i'm just flexing them around like you do with the new bridle for a horse just to get that leather a little bit more supple so now we got to think about putting this guy back on so i'm just going to mark out they had two nails in each handle i'm just going to kind of equal, equally space this so then i'm just going to drill those out like i would wood 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 just where my little marks are And then I'm going to use another, um, I'm going to use these brass nails under there to bend over. So they're a little bit smaller and they're a little bit longer so I can get a good bend on the back of them. So I'm just going to place them one at a time. Hopefully these holes line up. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a crimp in the middle. So it kind of sticks out a little bit. And there we go. Nice and sturdy. So I think for these nails, I'll use my black ones. Because there's not any other brass on the whole other part of the cabinet. So... I like how these are all beat up and stuff. That's why I kept them. But you can order these exact same ones. But they would have looked all new and weird on the cabinet. And again, we'll just bend them over in the back. looks nice looks like it's supposed to be there which is exactly what I'm going for so I'll do the other side and this piece and then we'll uh, think about getting those hinges or the top back on with the hinges and there it is all finished up looking nice and rustic still but clean and usable So we did a little bit of a gold patina, just a very slight patina on this type of hardware here. These pieces got a refinish, very nice, simple refinish. We did repaint a lot of this stuff and the black, put a little bit of paint on. There's our new handles that we stained and waxed. <sighs> Sorry, I'm out of breath, I just ran in here. It looks really good though. The inside is a showstopper. And it looks beautiful. Take a look at that. We've got our piece back there that's helping the hinges to give them a little strength and it's nice and clean and able to store things. We've got our, um, our stays on so that the lid stays up. And yeah, so it's looking really good. And the other side we had to steal the middle from to make this piece, we took that piece from the back and we added that little wood slat there. And it kind of works with everything else that's going on. So looks really good. So thanks guys for joining me on this one. This is a little piece that's been sitting in my shop for a long time and I'm happy to give it back to my friend today. So thanks so much. And if you want to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below this video. And as always, thank you so much for your kind comments and being part of this community. Cheers.